Hello and welcome to Life in the Fat Lane. It's Beefy Smalls, y'all, or you could just call me Zach. Either is fine by me. As some of you know, and some of you are about to find out, I am on a journey to lose 300 pounds. As of the recording of this episode, I am 60 pounds down, gone, 60 pounds, get out of here. In today's show, we're going to talk about one of the ways you can achieve success in weight loss in almost any aspect of life, and that is by setting goals along the way. We'll talk about what these goals can mean and more on this episode of Life in the Fat Lane. Yes, 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 yes. Hello and welcome to Life in the Fat Lane. We are here for yet another episode, but before we get started... I wanted to remind you to head on over to your socials where you can find me and my personal Instagram and Twitter at Beefy Smalls. I can also be found on TikTok at Zachary Dowell, and you can follow the show on Facebook at Fat Lane Studios. On TikTok, I can be found at Lit Fat Lane, L I T Fat Lane, and now on Instagram at Life in the Fat Lane Pod. So check the show notes for those links. That's the easiest way to find me. That's where we can talk. That's where we can get to know each other, have a good time, ask me questions, ideas for the show. You let me know what you want to hear because we're going to talk about it. And that's the spiel for the socials. So, as I mentioned before, before we got started here, today I wanted to talk about uh, setting goals for your weight loss or setting goals for anything in life, really. One of the things that uh, is kind of scary when you're starting something like this especially for me, like my overall journey is to lose 300 pounds. Holy smokes, 300 pounds, folks. That's a lot of pounds. I want to lose an obese human. Like the amount of weight I want to lose is literally the size of somebody who needs to lose weight. But I digress. Well, that's a whole nother topic. Actually, it's the same topic. It's this topic. That we're on. That's what the show is about. But the best way, maybe not the best, but the best for me, the best way to approach this is to cut that down into little little morsels, little pieces, little goals to attain, to make you feel good um, about what you're doing. So I have a, an app on my iPhone I think it's iPhone only called Happy Scale, and it kind of helps do this. So on this app, it actually breaks down. You can decide how you want to break it down. But it's broken down into like 10-pound increments. So you're reaching these 10-pound goals rather than looking at it like, oh, my God, I have to take one big step of 300 pounds. Nope. I'm taking 30 steps of 10 pounds. In even though that still seems like a lot because it is a lot you're still you're getting ahead in life like you're getting you're getting little you're setting these ba- goals boundaries you're setting these goals and you're achieving them so you're getting that good feeling quicker and it's kind of like like a steam engine like it's just and you're just feeding it and it's getting more powerful I listened to Dave Ramsey for a while there because I was wanting to get out of debt and uh, save money and buy a house before. And he has his debt snowball, which if you're not familiar with that, I'll just give you a brief breakdown. There's like seven steps to it. But uh, after the first step of getting your emergency fund or whatnot, that comes the debt snowball. And what that is, is you take all your debts from lowest amount owed to highest And then you pay the minimums on each of those. And then whatever you have left over at the end of the month to pay extra, you put on that smallest debt. Then once once that's paid off, you're going to now take the the minimum you were paying on that plus what you were paying extra, and you're going to apply it to the next one. And then the next one. So as you visualize this, as you close your eyes and you see this, if you're driving, don't close your eyes. But if you're not driving, close them. And just picture each of those balances starting off as a snowflake 
turning into a snowball and rolling down a hill. That snowball. Sounds easy, right? Anyhow. So that that snowball. That's kind of how I want to approach weight loss. Even though this ball isn't getting bigger so you're taking out bigger chunks, it's working in the same way as like my confidence is getting bigger. Each 10-pound goal that I meet is another success story. And each 10 pounds has its own struggles. But you beat them and you got that 10 pounds. And then you got 20 pounds. You got 30. I'm now at 60. Holy moly, that's awesome. So that's that's kind of the, the start of that. Is you're setting these little goals that are attainable in, in, in less time. Because it can be scary. Even 10 pounds is scary to try to get to. Especially when you hit that plateau. Let's say you've lost two or three pounds and then you just, it's just scale's not moving. Then it gets kind of scary and you're wondering, why am I even doing this? But you got to trust the process. If it was working before and you just have a little setback, maybe you got to change one or two things up, kind of figure that out. But a lot of times, if you just stay the course, your body's going to catch up with you and it's going to thank you. Because your body is kind of adjusting to this change as well. So you've been treating your body poorly for, and I'm kind of speaking to myself and many of us out there. You've been treating your body so poorly for so long that that's what it's used to. That's what it fuels off. That's what that's where it gets its fuel. And now you're changing it up, trying to give it the right things, less of the bad things. It's kind of got to adjust too. Just like when you when you face changes in other places, like you have to have a little time to adjust and and uh, get back at it, and that's the same with your body. It's kind of taking a step back and being like, whoa, 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 pal, what are you trying to do? So it might hold on to a little bit of that weight for security, like because it's thinking, I don't know if we're ever going to eat again, so I'm going to hold on to this for a while. But you ain't got to worry about that. Stay the course. Your body will realize, nah, I see what we're doing here. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. And then it starts working with you. And that's when you start seeing the weight go. You start seeing your body giving you the energy and uh, allowing you to sleep. And, and the, your brain function is elevated. It, it, it's an amazing thing. Uh, you just got to get to that and trust the process. Believe in it, believe in yourself, power of positive thinking. I love I love the thought of that. And I'm not just saying that for it to come true, but that's 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 really true. I'm a glass half full kind of guy for most things, so um, believe me when I say that. But along with these small goals, one thing I wanted to touch on is like rewarding yourself. But not with food. I can't tell you how many times I've got off track because I did so good for a week. And I'm like, well, I did good all week. I can treat myself on Saturday. And then Saturday turns into Sunday. Sunday turns into Monday. And now you're three weeks behind because you treated yourself and you can't control yourself. So I needed to find ways to reward myself without food. And that's what I wanted to kind of also talk about today. So one thing, um, I love music and going to concerts. I've been to way too many. uh, After COVID, I vowed. I'm like, if I can get to a concert, if I can make it to one, it doesn't cost me an arm and a leg to get there. I can drive there and drive home in a night. I'm going if I want to go. I live about two and a half hours away from the city, St. Paul, Minneapolis, So a lot of shows there. Uh, Madison is about an hour and a half, two hours away from me as well. Uh, Milwaukee's about three hours. So not a lot happens close to home, like really close to home. But I'm so used to driving these places that it, it ain't nothing but a thing. Give me a good show. I'll drive to it. Hell, Luke Combs, one of my, he's my favorite country singer. Um. He had his first stadium show at Mile High Stadium in Denver. 
and I flew out to that because I wasn't about to miss that. For one, I'm from Colorado, family in Denver, so I wanted to go back home. I love the mountains. Uh, speaking of mountains, I just got a, a tattoo of the mountains on my arm, on my right arm. Check out my Instagram to see that. Um, I love it. It's my second one. And I just I just love it to pieces. But anyhow, so flew out to the concert. It was amazing. Worth every penny, every minute, every hour spent getting there and getting home. Met some incredible artists. I have what we call concert luck. I tend to be in the right place at the right time. And I get to meet a bunch of people. Um, met Luke Holmes' mom. Uh, met many of the band members uh, who, uh, who I've met before. Uh, but in this situation, it was amazing. Um, getting off the airplane, actually. Standing in baggage check. There was a guy grabbing his guitar. And we were kind of walking. And, um, I'm, you know, I asked him if he was playing in a show in town. He said, yeah, he was. And I said, oh, that's awesome. I'm here for the Luke Combs show. Um, that's going on at Mile High Stadium. And then he introduced himself. His name's Heath Sanders. If you like country music, look him up. He's fantastic. He's great. Um, but yeah, we introduced ourselves. And uh, he said, yeah, I'm playing at the, I'm playing at the show. He d- there was a, a pre-concert before the show, uh, like a tailgate party. And he was playing that. Fantastic. Um has a song called Bloodline. Love it. And uh, so kind of fun fun story too is, you know, we kind of parted ways or whatever. And, and I hadn't heard of him before. So I, I listened to his music on the Uber ride to the hotel. Was like, huh, this guy's good. So then that night, this is the day before the concert. Uh, there was like a another tailgate party, like a pre, not a tailgate party, but like a, a pre-party for the show where a lot of the artists who were playing in these uh, little shows uh, came together and they talked about Luke and, and they played music. Um, And uh, he actually, he actually found me in the, in the crowd and took a picture with me. Um, I got my picture taken with Bailey Zimmerman was there. He performed. um, And then Nate Smith was doing a radio show in Denver and he came just to check it out. And it was kind of fun because I was calling for he was I saw him backstage and I was calling for him. He saw me come running out, told him I was a big fan, loved what he was doing. And I asked him if he was playing tonight. And he goes, No, I was just at a radio show. And he's like, I'm just here to see these guys and hang out. And then they convinced him to get on stage and sing a couple of his songs, and that was awesome. But those are the kind of things. Cappy, Luke's manager, met him too. I got my picture with him. Just a whole whole bunch of people. I met a lot of other fans of Luke's. And we're all acquaintances now um, on the internet. And that's kind of cool. I love meeting new people. That's why I like doing what I do too on here. I just want to meet people and get to know people and their stories. And especially when their stories are similar to mine. And I'm also here to help you out. If you just need that little bit of motivation, I want you to see that it can be done. It will be done. You have the power to change your life. You just got to do it. Once again, I'm also speaking to myself. You have the power to do what you need to do to get to where you want to be. Just got to do it. And there's going to be times that are hard. Especially like for me, perfect example tonight. Actually, we'll go, there's two times in the last week, last Sunday. I wanted to binge so bad. I wanted to go to all of every fast food joint in this town and get something from each one and just sit at home, turn on the TV and eat it all. But I didn't. My blood sugars are excellent right now. My weight is going down. I feel so good. But my brain was like, hey, 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 you know what you haven't had in a while? All this stuff. Get it. And I drove. I left my house and I drove to the parking lot. 
and I sat there. I think I told a similar story on one of my other shows. This happens on occasion. Like, this ain't going to be the last time you hear about this happening. I just hope each time I tell this story, and they're new stories, each time I hope that I get to end it this way. I drove home. I didn't go through the drive through I didn't order online. I drove home. Had dinner at home. Tonight, Tamara, my niece, who if you follow me on TikTok, you see my nieces. My niece Tamara lives with me with her two daughters. I love having them in my house. Um, Tamara was out. It's we're, we're in the middle of a blizzard right now. And uh, she was out and about, uh, who knows why, living dangerously, I guess. Um, and she was like, I'm stopping to get food. I don't feel like making anything. Do you want anything? Where are you going? Uh, we decide McDonald's, Taco Bell. She decides, I want Taco Bell. So I'm ready to text her my Taco Bell order. The same thing I always get every time. And boy, when she said Taco Bell, I, my, I was drooling. And I already had that bean burrito eaten in my mind. And a chili cheese burrito. Bean burrito, no red sauce, no onion, add sour. Chili cheese burrito, add sour. Side of nacho chips and cheese. Large Diet Pepsi. That's what I get. I had that typed out. Ready to send it. But I just erased it. And said, Tam, I still want that Diet Pepsi. But I'm eating at home. Thank you. Thank you, though. I'm good. So I ate at home. I don't think... I mean, if you're in the same situation, I've never told myself no like that. I got this way because every time I wanted it, I had it. It didn't matter what time of day. It didn't matter if I had already eaten dinner. And there's times that I went to my parents' house for dinner, or like on Sunday for football, and we'd eat dinner. Then the games would end and I'd drive home and I'd stop somewhere and get something before even going home. I didn't even think twice about it. Until that night when I felt like shit. Asking myself, why did I do this again? And then knowing full on, full well that I'm going to do it again. All right, let's kind of go back to where we were. We were talking about goals and rewards and not having food rewards. So for me, one of my rewards, I kind of had <laughs> I had it listed and I don't have it in front of me because I don't prepare very well, clearly. But on my rewards, it started with things like at 50 pounds, I'd buy a new outfit, maybe a pair of pants and a shirt. Maybe a pair of shoes. That might not seem like a big reward, but to somebody of my size, I can't just go to the store and buy clothes. So, sorry about that. The cat's making noise back there. I'm going to have to edit that out. Um, anyhow, I can't just go to the store and buy clothes. I have to order them, and they're all super expensive. So it's kind of a big reward, but that that's kind of where we were starting. 100 pounds, new tattoo. I only had one at the time when I made this list. I had been putting it off and putting it off, knowing that I wanted another one, but nothing just really stuck out to me like that I knew that I wanted to get. So that was something on my list. And it just kind of crept up, crept up, like every, you know, every 50 pounds, I'd have something, whether it be, you know, treating myself to a spa day or something like that. Um, and now that we're talking about this too, I need to come up with my new list because we're making waves and we're getting, we're reaching these goals. So I need to, I need to figure out what I'd like to reward myself with. And that's also kind of difficult because I've never really, I mean, obviously money issues, I haven't always just been able to buy whatever I wanted. But at this point, at this stage of my life, I really don't want a whole lot of things anymore. 
So when there is something that I want, I usually just kind of get it. But I'm going to kind of retrain my brain into earning these things. And the ultimate goal, the 300 pound goal, when I lose 300 pounds, I'm buying a Harley. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. So right now, that's that's the ultimate goal. But like I said, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write some new goals, and maybe I'll fill you guys in. When I do that, I'll let you all know what that is. So far, you've listened to me talk for about 20 minutes, just kind of going off on, on this kind of stuff. I love talking to you guys about this stuff, and I hope you find this entertaining. Um, so... So yeah, uh, going forward with that, um, just to kind of recap the, the two things that I said, really. It took me 20 minutes to tell you two things because I was telling stories. But goals. You want to set goals and make them attainable. No, I shouldn't say attainable, uh, but just don't make them so big that they just seem like so difficult to get to that you kind of burn yourself out trying to reach it because you're never reaching it. Like I said, I have 300 pounds to lose to get to where I want to be. And that's going to take me a long time to get there. And it just seems like, oh God, I'm still not there. I've been doing this for how long and I'm still not there. Break it down. 10 pounds a pop. Now I've been able to celebrate six times. My little successes. I've rewarded myself. I've bought some new clothes, but I'm going to kind of, you know, clothes, that's a tough, tough uh, buy right now. For one, because of the prices, and if I'm going to keep losing weight, I don't want to spend that much money on something that ain't going to fit me in a couple of months. I'll do it. Don't get me wrong, but I got to think about that stuff now. And then I got this tattoo. So that's going to be on my list of things I'd like to do because I want one on the other arm now. So reward yourself. And when you're rewarding yourself, especially if, if, you're do, if, if it's about weight loss, don't reward yourself with food. And if you do, don't let it be bad food. Let's say you have a favorite food item that you've been avoiding because it's a trigger food or, you know, it's just it's just something that's just, you love it, but it's not good for you and you need to stay away. Maybe one of your rewards is to find something similar to that in a healthier option or full on knowing that if I have this item in a portioned amount, it's game on tomorrow and we're not looking back. Have a plan, solid plan. But to me, if I have to think that hard and work that hard just to recover from my reward after having worked so hard, I would strongly recommend to stay away from that because I've been in those shoes and I've fallen for it. I've fallen for it. I've, I mean, look at me. I lost 70 pounds, almost 100 pounds. Gained it all back. Different circumstances, but that's just part of it. It's all part of the game that we're playing. So, yeah. Let me know. I want you to reach out to me on any of the socials. Uh, but check out, I know Instagram. A lot of people use Instagram. Life in the Fat Lane Pod on Instagram. Please give that a follow. And then on the notes, on the notes, geez, on the post about this episode, I want you to tell me some of your goals and if you have any rewards that you've come up with. What are the, how are you rewarding yourself? Give me some ideas on what to reward myself with that's not food. I don't care how small or how big. 
these rewards are. Well, hi, cat. I've got a cat crawling on my, Ow. Crawling on my shoulder now. I wish you could have seen that. Now there's a scratch on my shoulder. Anyways, that's what I wanted to talk about today. Set your goals. First, okay, first, figure out what your ultimate goal is. What is the end point in this journey that you're taking on? Mine again, 300 pounds. Now, let's break this up into tiny pieces, smaller pieces to get to get to that point. Like I said, mine's right now at 10 pound increments and I'm trying to do rewards at every 50 pounds. Because 50 pounds, well Jesus, 10 pounds, but 50 pounds is not something to shake a stick at like it's easy to do. If it were that easy, we'd all do it and we'd all be done. We'd all be exactly where we want to be. Set attainable goals. Don't be afraid to reward yourself. It doesn't have to be anything lavish or expensive. Whatever makes you happy. Do something that brings you joy. Buy yourself something. Volunteer. Whatever it is. But I just wanted to tell you, and right now, I am so glad that you have joined me here on Life in the Fat Lane. I could use all the support from you guys that I can get. And I want to be there for you too. So let me know. Like I said, in the socials, links in the description. Let me know what your your goals, your rewards, what are you trying to achieve? And let me know how I can help you with that. Anyhow, my name is Beefy Smalls, or some call me Zach, but this is Life in the Fat Lane. Oh.